Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Hopefully you're all having amazing creative days. So last week I put out a poll on my community tab asking you guys, which video do you wanna see next? Over 70% of you said you wanna see R versus R7. So here we go. Let's make a video talking about these two cameras right here. All right, before we get started, I'm doing a giveaway. This is the Black Mamba cage for the R7, and I'm doing a giveaway contest for the month of January, 2023. So if it's still January and it's 2023 and you wanna enter the contest, check the description below. So with that being said, let's get into the video. So here's the thing with these two cameras. They're both fantastic cameras, but they're also very similarly priced. So if you're thinking of buying one, you might also explore the other one and think maybe I should buy the other one as well. So in this video, we're gonna go over the specs and then we're gonna talk about which camera is best suited for what type of photographer or videographer because there are subtle differences between the two cameras which kinda push them in one direction or another. So that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. All right, so if you buy either one of these cameras, you're gonna be happy with the results. They both produce fantastic photos, fantastic videos, and they're awesome. And I have to start this video by saying, I sit in the camp that says full frame is better than APS-C. It just, you have better quality images, more details and all that kind of stuff. And I have to say that after using the R7 for a month, I am super impressed with the sensor in this camera, the details, the photo quality, it is, wow, it is good. You know, I, I think this one definitely closed the gap in my head in the, the question of which is better, APS-C or full frame. This, this camera is really impressive. So uh, yeah, let's put these head to head and take a look at some of the specs. On the left, we have the Canon EOS R weighing in at 660 grams and released in 2018. It represents Canon's first jab into the mirrorless market. With its full frame sensor borrowed from the wildly successful EOS 5D Mark IV, it boasts professional level photo quality at a price that makes it the best bang for the buck full frame camera in Canon's life. On the right, we have the EOS R7 weighing in at 612 grams. Released in 2022, the EOS R7 features an APS-C size sensor and can shoot at a blistering speed of 30 frames per second. It also has a 1.6 reach advantage with all lenses, allowing you to get even closer to subjects. Who will come out on top in this battle of two cameras at the $2,000 price range? All right, so when it comes to the ergonomics of these cameras, they're Canon cameras, so they both feel absolutely fantastic in the hands. There's no complaint, they fit they fit the hands really well. Your pinky might sort of hang over the cameras a little bit if you've got bigger hands. These cameras are mirrorless, so they're designed to be small and compact compared to DSLRs. So they are smaller, that's one thing. Uh, in terms of button layout, I'll give them both a seven out of 10. There's just some awkwardness here with both these cameras. I mean, if you move up to the six, uh, the R6 or the R5 or the R3, all the button layout is perfect. They give those cameras 10 out of 10. And the reason I give these two both seven out of 10 is just there's a little awkwardness. Like on the R, there's a little multifunction touch bar instead of a joystick. And it's also missing the, the rear dial. It only has two dials instead of three. And the same thing with the R7. It's, it doesn't have a rear dial. It's got this weird like dial joystick thing. And then it's got the front dial, but it doesn't have a third dial for ISO. You have to hit the ISO button and then turn the dial to change your ISO and then go back. So the fact that they don't have three dials kind of irks me a little bit. And that's why I'm giving it, uh, giving them both seven out of 10. With the professional cameras, you have one dial for ISO, one for aperture, one for shutter speed. So if you're in a pinch or you're shooting something and you need to quickly change your settings, you just spin the dial and you're set, you're good to go. With these cameras, the process is just not as simple. So uh, there we go, ergonomics and button layout. The EOS R comes with a 30.3 megapixel full frame sensor and the R7 comes in at 32.5 megapixels on an APS-C sensor. All right, so let's take a look at this photo. We're gonna do a comparison between the R7 and the R. This first photo here is shot with the EOS R7. I shot it at ISO 400 on the R. I had it at ISO 800, so I bumped up the exposure on the R7 shot, but I did no color grading, no sharpening, no nothing. This is right out of camera. So this is a stack of books I wanna read in 2023. So I have them sitting on my computer and I thought, hey, let's just take a shot here. And the focus is on the Jordan of the Jordan B. Peterson name. So we're focused here on the Jordan. This is the R7 shot. This is the R shot. So you can see side by side, zoomed out, they look pretty much identical. There isn't much difference between them. And 
if we zoom in to 100%, this is where the resolution of a full frame sensor starts to shine. So this is the R7 right here. We're focused on the Jordan, All right? And if we switch over to the R, you can see that the resolution completely changes. You got a lot cleaner, crisper images. There's a lot more resolving power. So that's the advantage of full frame over APS-C. However, I will say that if you shoot content with the R7 and you shoot photos with an APS-C size sensor and you shrink them down to 1080 pixels for Instagram and web and all that stuff, it really doesn't make a difference which camera you shoot because once you shrink it down, resolution, sharpness, all that increases. But uh, you should also experience a little more dynamic range with a full frame sensor over an APS-C size sensor as well. So if dynamic range is something that's important to you, then a full frame is probably the way to go. The EOS R has a shutter rating of 200,000 shots and can shoot at a maximum burst of eight frames per second. The R7 on the other hand also has a shutter rated for 200,000 shots, but can shoot at 15 frames per second mechanical shutter and 30 frames per second electronic shutter. Though there is a bit of a caveat when it comes to the electronic shutter. The readout speed on the electronic shutter on the EOS R7 is really slow. It's at 31.3 milliseconds. So in the photography world, that's slow. And on the R, <laughs> yeah, it's even slower at 80 milliseconds. So definitely not good at capturing high speed here. And even with the, with the R7, if you wanna shoot fast action sports, let's say baseball swings, golf swings, anything that's moving super fast, even this camera, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use it in electronic shutter mode with that slow readout speed. In mechanical shutter mode, both cameras shoot at four milliseconds. So that's something to think about. Four milliseconds each in mechanical shutter mode, electronic shutter, this one's down to 31.1 milliseconds. So that's super slow and you're gonna get this weird jello effect. So what happens is you have, like this is just gonna be an oversimplified explanation. You have the sensor and when there's a shutter, the shutter comes down, physically blocks the light and then moves out of the way. So that's your four milliseconds, right? When it comes to electronic shutter, what happens is the, the sensor here gets red pixel by our lot, pixel, 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 pixel. So the camera reads down each pixel. And of course the processing power and the limitations of the camera and the electronics means that it can't read it as fast as the shutter comes up and down, right? So when that happens, you get these wonky jello -y effects. So if you're shooting birds and they're flapping their wings, you might get a weird like double, triple wing or weird kind of bend. And the same thing with a golf club. If you're shooting a golf or swinging, the golf club will be in weird positions because by the time the camera starts reading the pixels and finishes reading the pixels, the golf club is in two different positions or the bird's wing is in two different positions. So you get this weird kind of jello -y effect. So that's the caveat with the R7. If you want to use it for fast action sports, just be aware that the electronic shutter is a slow readout speed. And here's a chart with a little more information here. You can see the readout speeds of different cameras and stuff like that. If you want to know more about this, check out this YouTuber right here. He did a fantastic job on this video explaining how everything works with the R7. So I definitely recommend that you take a look at that video after this one if you want to know more about the readout speeds. All right, so now let's talk about the processors. And believe it or not, it makes a big deal in certain situations, there is a difference. So the R has the Digic 8 processor and the R7 has the Digic X processor, which is newer, faster, and that kind of thing. And where the Digic 8 processor really struggles is in low light situations. If you're shooting both cameras in daylight, studio light, normal situations, it's fine. Even like sunsets, it's fine. But if you're shooting in dark situations, for example, uh, a wedding reception and you're shooting in a dark hall. I have a video right there about the EOS R as a wedding photography camera. But uh, one of the things I noticed is that the processor can't process the information coming through onto the sensor and display it on the EVF and LCD without getting choppy. So the frame rates on the EVF and LCD drop significantly and you get like a really kind of choppy, slow kind of update. And since this is an optical, it's only electronic, you're relying on that to sort of compose your shot. So in situations when it's dark and this processor struggles to refresh the frame rate here, I rely more on like portrait photography or composed shots rather than action shots, especially at weddings. So I'll tell the people, hey, stand still, I'm gonna take your photo as opposed to, yeah, just keep dancing and I'll just keep shooting, right? So that's just one thing to keep in mind that when it does get dark out and this processor gets pushed to its limit, the frame rate on the EVF and LCD drop. 
All right, when it comes to what the official rating for shots per battery is, here it is. And I can tell you in real life, the numbers are a lot higher than this when it comes to shots for the R and the R7. But the R7 clearly has the advantage in the number of shots it can take. I assume it's probably because of the smaller sensor and the smaller screen and probably the new processor is more efficient with, uh, with battery life. So that's that. When it comes to video with both these cameras, they will chew through batteries relatively quickly I, I, you probably get an hour an hour and a bit of uh, footage with each camera depending on your your your, uh, your mode your video mode but if you do want to buy these cameras for video i would strongly suggest either getting a dummy battery so you can plug it into the mains or get extra batteries so you can switch out the batteries when needed otherwise yeah you're going to be running out of batteries pretty fast all right so here's a biggie autofocus which one has better autofocus and to be honest they're both the same I'm shooting with the R5 right now as well, and it's the same as well. These Canon cameras have incredible autofocus. It's fast, it's snappy, it locks onto things, it's responsive. When you push the button, it just goes and goes and goes. And the one difference is in, in the visuals anyway, with the R5 and the R7, when you're shooting a human face, that little box will appear around the eye and it'll be a lot stickier. So if the face is moving around, the box will stick to the face. With the R, They'll have a box around the eye, then the box will go around the head, and then the eye, and then the head, and the eye, and the head. And it goes back and forth, so it's a little jumpier, but you can rest assured, in, in my experience with the R so far, even if the box is around the whole head instead of the eye, it focuses, focuses on the eye part of the head, so that's fantastic. Now, the one place where the R7 shines over the R is if you wanna shoot uh, vehicles, if you wanna shoot animals, birds, planes, that kind of thing. This is uh, this only has eye detection AF for people, whereas the uh, the R7 has animal eye detect or not animal eye animal uh, tracking and vehicle tracking. So if you want to shoot animals, you want to shoot uh, vehicles, motorsports, motorcycles, that kind of thing, the R7 is uh, the better choice for you. And another advantage the R7 has over the R is the speed at which it can track. The R kind of like if if your subject is moving really fast back and forth, the R will be like, I don't know. Right, whereas the R7 is a lot stickier, so if your subject is moving erratically and fast, it'll lock on and, and track that a lot better. One thing I will note though, is with these cameras, if you're shooting video and you wanna slow down the focus so it's not super fast and responsive, let's say you want a nice slow rack focus to make it more cinematic, they have settings in the menu where you can go into the menu and slow down the, uh, the autofocus speed so you can get a smoother rack focus transitioning between two objects in your frame but that's just in video mode, not photo mode. So when it comes to ISO, here are the ISO ranges of both cameras. What does this mean in real life? Real life experience probably doesn't mean much at all because who's gonna shoot at an ISO that high anyway? But uh, the one thing you do have to keep in mind is that because the full frame sensor is bigger and can gather more light, it'll get noisy slower than the R7. So let's say at ISO 12,000, the R will be a lot cleaner than the R7. So that's the only thing you have to keep in mind. If you're shooting in, in dark situations, low light, you have to bump up the ISO on the R7 a lot sooner and you're gonna get a lot noisier, a lot faster with this camera. But then again, like I said, if you're shooting for social media, Instagram, that kind of thing, once you shrink your, your image down to 1080p, most of the noise disappears anyway. So it's not really a big concern. There you go. All right, so now let's talk about in-body image stabilization or IBIS. The R7 has it, the R does not. So if you're looking for handheld footage, like if you wanna do some like vloggy reels or vlog shorts or TikToks and stuff like that, you can do that with the R7 and it has in-body image st stabilization. So you're gonna get a lot more stable footage. Now both cameras also have uh, digital IS and enhanced digital IS, so that's uh, an in-body, I guess, electronic kind of stabilization and it crops into your frame. And both cameras have access to lenses with image stabilization, so they both have that. So you can get away with the R, you just, you can't get too shaky or you're gonna see it, but the R with digital uh, stabilization plus a lens with IS is pretty good, but the R7 is going to be better. So if you're looking to vlog, also the, the R7 is a little bit lighter, so for vlogging it would be a better choice. The only thing you have to keep in mind is that because this is a crop sensor, uh, APS-C, it's a 1.6 crop on all your lenses, so all your lenses become a little longer. So in order to um, vlog with the R7, you're gonna need an ultra wide lens, like a 16 millimeter or something like that. I know there's an RFS, or I hear rumors of an RFS, what, 
10 to 22 or something like that coming out. So uh, yeah, that would be a perfect vlogging lens for the R7 and I'm sure a lot of content creators are gonna be interested in that one. So yeah, this has Ibis, the R doesn't. All right, here's a few miscellaneous things. The EOS R has 5,655 focus points while the R7 has 651. What does that mean in real life? Absolutely nothing. I haven't noticed that the R7 lacks in any way when it comes to autofocus. They're both weather resistant, which is definitely a, a plus and a plus for both of them. Now, when it comes to the hot shoe, the EOS R has the old standard hot shoe where the R7 has the new enhanced hot shoe connector. And that one allows you to attach devices like uh, a Canon mic. And then there's this other like mic system. I keep forgetting the name of it. Tascam mic system with XLR ports. So if you're looking to shoot more professional video, then the, uh, the R7 has that option. And when you upgrade the R7 to another camera, you can take that Tascam recorder with you. So it's a nice little, uh, nice little addition if it's something that you're going to use. There aren't a lot of accessories for that advanced hot shoe yet. When it comes to custom modes, both cameras have three custom modes in video and three custom modes in photo. Both cameras are Wi-Fi enabled, so you can take photos with the cameras and transfer them onto the phone. And the R7 does have a newer Wi-Fi system, so I guess that might have some advantage in some way. And finally, we have the LCD screen on the back, and there is a slight difference. The R has a 3.15 inch screen, where the R7 has a three inch screen. The resolution on the R screen is 2.1 million dots, and the resolution on the R7 is 1.62 million dots. Now, again, what does that mean in real life? Not much. It's hard to tell the difference. Once you get used to one screen, it's not a big deal. But I can tell you, after using the R and the R7, when I switch back to the R, like it just feels like a bigger screen and it's more robust, but it shouldn't make any difference to you if you're a photographer or videographer. The only people I could see the, the bigger resolution screen making a difference to is people who wear glasses. So if you have trouble reading smaller text, maybe the R7 isn't the one, maybe you should go for the R. The text is slightly bigger on the back of the screen, but I don't think that's a huge deal breaker one way or another. All right, so when it comes to video, there's a, there's a lot of things to cover here. I might make another video specifically about the video capabilities of each camera and compare them head to head there, because uh, otherwise this video is gonna get super long. But let's just go over the basics here. Obviously no record limit on the R7, record limit on the R. Um, they, both, they both are fantastic cameras in terms of video and their ability to focus and track and all that stuff. I've got no issues with them. The, the, the EOS R has a 1.6 crop when you're filming in 4K, but the R7 is an APS-C size sensor, which inherently has a 1.6 crop. So you're kind of getting the same field of view with both cameras, so it doesn't really matter in that sense. So the big difference here is that if you want long form video, the R has a 30 minute record limit where the R7 doesn't. They both have micro HDMI ports. The one advantage I think the R7 has over the R in terms of video quality is the R7 shoots over sample. So it shoots bigger than 4K and then shrinks it down to 4K in camera, which gives you a nice sharp image. Although the EOS R does have a nice, nice image. The one thing I've done with the EOS R is I can shoot in 1080p. It has a really nice 1080p all eye codec and you can shoot in 1080p, pop it in your Premiere Pro and then export in 4K and then pop it onto YouTube as a 4K video and it looks fantastic. So. They're both amazing. In terms of video codecs, the R7 has IPB and IPB Lite only. So that's, I, I'm not gonna say that's an issue, but if you shoot for YouTube and TikTok and Instagram, IPB is all you need. But if you have clients that want you to shoot at a higher codec, you know, higher bit rate, more information, more detail, the R shoots at IPB, IPB. No, it doesn't have IPB Lite, it has IPB and all I. So, all I is a more beefier codec. But here's the thing I want to say is that if you have a client that's paying you big bucks to have ultra high resolution video, then you probably wouldn't be shooting with either one of these cameras, right? So you probably want something a little more, more, more cinematic featured enabled kind of thing. Um, they can both shoot log, which is awesome. This one, the R7 has C-Log1 and C-Log3. Now the nice thing with these both these cameras is this one shoots in 8-bit. This one, if you shoot log, you can shoot in 10-bit. Uh, the R, you can shoot in 10-bit with an external recorder. So if you have a Ninja, for example, you can plug the Ninja in here and shoot at 10-bit 422. This one can do 10-bit 422 internally, but only in log format. 
So that's something to keep in mind. But like I said, you, if you get an engine recorder on here, you can just record at ProRes RAW and be happy. All right, I think I touched on all the bases there. If you wanna know more about the video specs between these cameras and want me to do a specific video just with video comparisons between these two, let me know in the comments below and I can make that for you. All right, so now that the specky stuff is out of the way, let's explore these two cameras from a practical standpoint and figure out which camera is right for you. But before I get into that, I just wanna say again that both these cameras are fantastic. No matter which one you choose, if you have the R7 or the R, you're gonna be super happy with the quality of the photos and the videos that you can produce with these cameras. And at this price point, I mean, we certainly are spoiled to have such good tech at this price point. So let's get started. All right, so if you're a short form content creator, you wanna make YouTube shorts, Instagram reels, TikToks, the R7 is the camera for you. This is a short form making beast. You have a nice screen that flips up. So if you wanna do like vertical vlogs and things like that, it's perfect. The nice thing with the R7 is that the mic input is on the top part of the panel here. So when you flip up the screen, the cable is not gonna block your screen and that's a huge plus. So if you wanna create short form content, this is quick and easy. Just turn it on, make your videos, export it to your computer, edit and upload, and uh, it's fantastic. On the other hand though, if you're more into cinematic video, I would recommend the EOS R. The larger sensor allows you to shoot in, in darker situations, dimmer light, and you can get more of that moody feel. Plus you also have the shallow depth of field because of the full frame sensor, so you can shoot a little more bokeh, so you can isolate your subject matter from the background for telling stories. It'll just help the, the viewer focus on what it is you wanna talk about. I think this is a good general purpose video camera, whereas I think this one has more artistic appeal because of the sensor and what you can do with this sensor. All right, so now that the video stuff's out of the way, let's talk about photography. Which is the better photography camera? Which one's for you? Now, if you're into shooting sports, let's say you're shooting soccer, baseball, golf, all that kind of stuff, the R7 is definitely the one for you. It's got the faster shutter speed. You're not gonna miss shots because this thing is shooting too slow. This one's gonna go you're gonna get the shot, you just have to you know, find the shot you want, pull it out, edit it. Now the only caveat here, as mentioned before, is the slow shutter readout. So I would stick to mechanical shutter if the stuff that you're shooting is ultra fast. And if it's just kind of quick, maybe electronic shutter will work for you, but definitely better for sports photography. Also wildlife and uh, bird photography, the R7 is fantastic. You have that 1.6 crop on all your lenses, so you get a little extra reach. You can turn the 1.6 crop feature on on the EOS R and it crops into the sensor, but you lose resolution at that point. It becomes, what, something like 12 megapixels when you crop into 1.6, whereas this, you get the, fur, the full 32.5 megapixels well cropped in with the 1.6. And there's an additional crop on that too, which you can add so you can punch in even more. And then if you turn on digital stabe, <laughs> you crop in even more. So you can get you can get a pretty good crop with this and really zoom in on stuff. So if you have to shoot things at a distance, if you shoot animals, if you shoot sports, the R7 is the one for you. Now, on the other hand, if you're more into creative photography, if you want to shoot weddings, if you want to shoot portraits, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna, there's a side note there with weddings. This car this camera only has one card slot. So the video I mentioned earlier about my wedding photography experience with the EOS R, I have a little trick for that because you definitely don't want your car dying. And yeah, for, for creative photography, the R is definitely better. Again, the full frame sensor gives you that nice shallow depth of field if you wanna go with bokeh. Although if you do studio photography and you shoot with lights and you're shooting at F8 anyway, the R, the R7 doesn't really matter. They're both the same, but for outdoor shoots, for low light shoots, for moody shots, creative shots, if you wanna shoot fashion, definitely I think the R7 would be better. A lot of the fashion brands want to see the details in the clothes, the fine details, the threads, the you know that kind of thing. And the full frame sensor is definitely better at capturing those kinds of details. So yeah, if you're if you're into more creative photography, portraits, that kind of thing, are definitely better for you. If you're into sports and wildlife, fast action stuff, the R7 would be better for you. Personally, for me, if I could only choose one of these cameras for my style of photography and what I do, which is you know, a lot of wedding stuff and then a lot of portraits and headshots and just, just people shots in general, I would pick the R for myself. I think this is an awesome camera. Now, what people need to realize about the R is that the sensor in this camera is from the 5D Mark IV. Now, if you go back to the DSLR days, Canon had the flagship 1D series cameras, right? And that was the top shelf, that was the best of the best. And one rung below that was the 5D series. 
and the 5D Mark IV was the best of the best when it came to the 5D cameras. And when Canon created the R, they took the, the sensor out of that camera, stuck it in here. So you're getting a professional quality sensor, a professional level sensor, a sensor that was developed for professional photographers in the EOS R at this price point. So I really feel like the EOS R is still the best bang for the buck full frame camera in Canon's lineup. I mean, sure, the R6 has better features, the R5 has better features, the R3 has better features, but if you want just a pure photography camera with all the, without all those frills and extra things and all that stuff, the sensor in here is fantastic. Its ability to shoot is fantastic. Eye tracking is good enough and it's an awesome camera. You have a really, really, really nice sensor in this camera. This camera might even be like the whole, the unicorn camera in Canon's lineup. And once this thing is discontinued and they stop selling it in stores, there may be like a big push for, for collectors or buyers to buy the EOS R because you're getting top quality sensor in a very affordable price here. And it's an awesome camera. I've been really happy with this one so far. Like I said at the beginning of the segment, whichever camera you go for, you're gonna be able to create amazing photos. And the one thing you gotta remember is that 99% of the photo happens here. I mean, if you're a newbie, you pray and spray. You just keep shooting and shooting and you hope that eventually you get a good shot. But if you're someone who knows how to use these, these uh, equipments, these cameras, then you understand that you have to think about the shot, create it in your mind, set up the settings, take your shot, and that's how you capture your photograph or your video. And both of these cameras are excellent at that. So with that being said, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about either one of these cameras, leave it in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. And yeah, there'll be more content with these cameras coming to the channel. I have a lot of content with the EOS R already on the channel. So if you wanna see more videos with that camera, check out my other content, more video content with EOS R as well coming. So yeah, that's it. Peace out. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video.